Good evening and welcome everyone. I can see um, almost more than 100 people here with us right now in this National HRD Network Pune chapter and Upohans, uh, the very prestigious platform between the lines. Uh, today's webinar uh, title is 22 Yards and Beyond. And as we all know in the attendees and the presenters, uh, how fascinating this uh, one and a half hour uh, is going to be. Without wasting much of time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me put it forward to Dr. Neeraj Mankar, the treasurer of uh, National HRD Network Pune, to take this session forward. I would like to request each and every one in the attendees to please uh, keep in mind that all your questions are more than welcome. However, you, if you want to put it forward, then you can put it on the questions tab and not in the chat. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, putting it forward to Dr. Neeraj Mankar. Neeraj, sir, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Darpan. Uh, a very good evening to uh, all my uh, illustrious panelists uh, and my two good friends from Upohan, uh, and also to the uh, large number of attendees who have joined in. Uh, this uh, is, uh, you know, as, as we see the lovers of cricket on this panel, this is a record breaking uh, sort of uh, webinar that we have with over 500 people having registered for the webinar. So uh, thank you all of you. I, I think it's uh, it says a lot, you know, about the panel and about uh, the uh, over the last three years that we've been having the relationship with uh, Adwait, Eklavya and Upohan. And uh, we started off uh, in April 2018 with the first round of uh, the Between the Lines and coincidentally or since uh, uh, Adwait is a good strategist, strategically uh, the first uh, uh, person on the panel was also a cricketer. Uh, I think it was uh, Ganguly if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, the book, book by him. So uh, we come back a full circle in three years Adwait and uh, thank you so much. Uh, the National HRD Network, uh, we uh, have been doing a lot of uh, webinars and a lot of other uh, events, uh, not just specifically to the HR, but for the entire community. And we've been happy to partner with Upuhan for such a long time. And uh, I'm sure that uh, like the uh, other webinars that we've been having in the last three years, this will also be uh, a great uh, webinar to sit through and enjoy it. So I'm not going to take much time. Again, on behalf of uh, Anand Khot, our president, uh, Aman, our uh, secretary, uh, Saima, and you met uh, Darpan, my uh, you know uh, partners in marketing uh, crime who kept on uh, sending all the mailers to all of you attendees here, and our creative guy, Salil, uh, a big thank you. And uh, once again, welcoming it to the Over to you, Adwet, and Hiklavi. Thank you, uh, Neeraj, and it's always uh, great to have our partnership going along strong after three years, like you said. Uh, good evening, and my name is Advait Kurlekar. My colleague here is Eklavi Malotra, and both of us represent a Pune-based management consulting company called Apohan Management Consultants. And we've been uh, sort of conducting these uh, between-the-line program for the last uh, over nearly four years now. In fact, this is the edition number 55 which means uh, you know, for people who have been attending our programs regularly, they know, but a lot of new names uh, today, I'm sure, and for their benefit, they typically the format of the program is that each month, we pick up a book that is a, we believe is a good book to read or has got recently launched and has got good reviews. And uh, you know, Eklavya here takes us through a fantastic summary of that book. And every book has learnings, every book has insights. And therefore, depending on what these insights are, what the topic is, we invite people and we have been inviting people from the industry. And uh, I try and moderate a panel discussion and get the panelists talking. So that has been typically the format. Uh, today is a rare occasion, one of those few of those 55 that we've done so far, where we have the rare honor of having the author himself uh, on the panel. And therefore, there's a slight uh, twist uh, in our today's uh, schedule. So uh, mm -hmm. I will still hand over to Eklavia because otherwise many of his fans will miss his action. So he will take us uh, very briefly through uh, some introduction to the book that we uh, have chosen for today and the author, of course. 
and uh, then uh, I'll come back and instead of a summary, I will have a lovely uh, sort of uh, engaging talk or interview, if I may like, uh, with Milin Gunjal, uh, who all of us know, uh, uh, you know, is the author of today's book, and we will talk about his career and his book. And then, uh, you know, as always, we have three more esteemed panelists who will join us, and we'll have again a free willing discussion in terms of 22 yards and beyond, like Darpan mentioned. Uh, cricket, as we see, is always what we see on the on on the ground or increasingly on television. But there are so many things that happen in the ecosystem, and uh, we would love to hear uh, all that goes. Uh, some of the nice and some of the not so nice things, depending on what the panelists share. So uh, over to you, Eklavia. Take us through a quick summary in terms of what you have today, and then uh, Milin and we will get talking for some time. And uh, before uh, I hand over. Uh, yes, NHRDA, uh, we have partnered for last uh, three years now, but this being a special cricket and sports kind of edition, uh, we have another partner with us called Sportism, which is a very young, vibrant startup uh, that, that does business uh, into uh, sports-related leisure travel. Sportism, so, you know, please try and go on their social websites, uh, Facebook, Insta, website, etc., and understand what they are all about. Over to you, Ekla. Thanks, Advait. Uh, I hope my screen is visible to everyone. So, like Advait said, I will not take up too much time because we've got uh, the man of the moment today here with us today. We've got the author himself. So, Milan Gonzal is here with us today. And he really needs no introduction. But uh, just for those of us who might be of considerably younger age and who may not recollect Milan's feats on the ground, he's a former first class cricketer and he's captain the Maharashtra Ranji team. And post his cricketing days, he's also worked as a match referee and coach. Uh, Milind made his debut at a very young age and uh, he's also had the distinction of representing the Indian team at under 22 and under 25 age groups. Uh, he was also part of the West Zone team, which has played against a number of international touring sites. And uh, it has always probably been one of the great misfortunes of Arashtra state level cricket and possibly Indian cricket also, that Milin did not get the much deserved chance to represent the senior Indian team. And he really came heartbreakingly close to that back in 1986. Uh, but undeterred by that, Milin has left his mark across uh, various cricketing group levels and league cricket. He's played professional cricket in Ireland and Kenya, where he's been a prolific run scorer. And also, again, the reason what, what probably makes Milan so unique uh, is that his life has not just remained limited to cricket or in the pursuit of greatness of the cricket field. He's also spent a very commendable 36 years working across the Tata group. And in his last stint over there, he was basically the sports manager for Tata Motors, where he's had the notable achievement of actually bringing so many other sports to the limelight, like hockey, football, athletics. So cricket notwithstanding, he's actually done a lot for many other sports, and he's contributed to so many more athletes who have made it to the national and international level, courtesy of course his and Tata Motors efforts. So that's just a bit about Milind and the reason why, uh, of course, you know, we are doing this particular session is because Milind has just now come up with a new book. This is an autobiography, uh, which he's written down in just about three weeks last year during the first lockdown. And if you were to read the book, and I would strongly urge all of you to get a copy, to order a copy of the book, it's an engaging read and it will really leave you astonished that how could he cover so many details in such an engaging manner in just a time span of three weeks. So the book is fascinating. It really has a lot of anecdotes, which I'm sure all of us as cricket lovers and uh, you know amateurish connoisseurs of the game, we all love to get you know some kind of sneak peek into what happens behind the cricketing achievements, behind the 22 yards. And this book is not really short of those kind of insights, anecdotes, and stories. And honestly, Milan does not deserve too much of, you know, validation from any of us because when the little master and the colonel 
themselves have put it on paper in terms of what Milan means to Ranji cricket in general and Maharashtra cricket in particular, then you know that you're probably in the company of somebody who has really achieved quite a bit on the field and beyond. So uh, having said that, I move on to Adwet to now get some uh, kind of insights from Milind on his journey on the book, and then we'll move on to the panel discussion post that. Thanks, Eklavia, and um, uh, you know for the wonderful quick summary or introduction. So, uh, uh, Milind, uh, let me start uh, you know talking to you in terms of about the book and your journey. Uh, you know, uh, you you you've been known as a batsman, of course, prolific batsman, and also a leg spinner. Uh, so I'll come to the googly questions later. I'll first uh, give you a simple one. Uh, you know, if, <laughs> so you know, everybody, uh, you know, uh, post retirement, uh, you know, starts writing in terms of you know uh, contributing back in terms of autobiography kind of thing. Uh, well, when I read your book, it's not exactly an autobiography. Uh, and the title of the book is very, very unique. So let me start with simple, straight kind of ball, simple ball to, for you to bat. That, you know, what led you to the book, writing book and, you know, choosing this kind of format for the book, where, you know, there are different people who have come in your life, cricketing or otherwise have contributed to the book, uh, lovely photographs, etc., etc. And why this particular name? Yeah, good evening, Advait. Um... Let me confess that uh, uh, it was only during the uh, the last lockdown, uh, which was announced on the 24th of March, uh, 2020, uh, and that was for uh, three weeks. So we always have been, uh, you know, outdoors uh, doing something at either working or on the ground. So uh, absolutely, I had no clue what to do uh, those three weeks sitting at home. Okay. And uh, then I uh, just picked up a pen and uh, and a book and uh, just started scribbling, uh, you know, my memories. Uh, there was no intention of writing a book as such. Uh, I just started writing, you know, uh, two, three weeks. I just kept on writing. Whatever came to the mind uh, that particular day, I just uh, wrote it down. And then after writing about 100 odd uh, pages, uh, I realized that, you know, maybe I can, you know, this can come out, uh, you know, uh, can become a, a small book. Uh, you know, I wasn't very sure. But then mm -hmm. I, uh, I put it in the computers, you know, I typed it and uh, uh, then I uh, realigned it a little bit. And I thought, yes, it has a potential of, uh, you know, uh, having a book or uh, of some size. Uh, one more thing, you know, I was always uh, little, uh, uh, I was hurt, you can say, that, uh, you know, I see a lot of uh, cricketers uh, who have not made at the highest level. And then, you know, what happens, they, they are struggling for, for jobs or they are struggling for their livelihood, you know, yeah. if, you, if they have not made it at the highest level. You know, only yeah. those few who, who make it to the highest level you know, they are financially well off, uh, they are settled, well settled in life. See, what happens is a cricketer spends a lot of time uh, on the field. You know, if you are playing first class cricket, you are practicing, you know, five, six hours a day at least. And, yeah. you know, you are spending the most important uh, 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 age factor, you know, like 15 to 25, that age span that you are spending on the field you know for cricket so you know you have you know you have not uh, given much importance uh, to studies or any other you know uh, uh, earnings you can say you know you how you are going to uh, earn your living so you are after cricket and you you, you have spent so much of time and then if you don't make it uh, at the age of say 25 or 30 then you are neither here nor there you know and mm -hmm. then it's if you are not a graduate, then you know people find it difficult to get jobs. And you know I have seen quite a few cricketers re, uh, really struggling. So uh, through this book, you know I I thought you know uh, I can uh, you know I can be some of some use to uh, to guide the bo the boys you know the youngsters because nowadays you know there are so many uh, boys coming into cricket 
you know say uh, if you have to just compare in our times if 100 boys in pune were playing cricket today there are maybe 10000 play uh, you know uh, boys uh, getting into yeah, cricket yeah. they see the glamour they see the, of course it is there but you know how many can really you know earn a living out of cricket you know yeah. there are very few in, in in india you can say you know maybe you know i i can say about a thousand people can can uh, earn real good living out of cricket beyond that uh, you know if you don't make it then you, you know you should have some fallback arrangement uh, you know sure. that is what i thought and uh, that's what i you know it reflects in my book that you know people sure. Sh sure. should have the that's, second that's sort of uh, why you uh, named it that way yes no the naming uh, the book i can i can tell you you know why that name you know after my uh, you know after i finished playing cricket uh, you know i was on some committee uh, in the association and you know uh, i i attended uh, one meeting i came you know uh, all the way from pimpri you know i came uh, and went rushing to the meeting at maybe 6:30 7 o'clock and um, uh, unfortunately that meeting you know nothing much was discussed about about cricket you know for two but a few other things were discussed and i came back home uh, you know a little disappointed and my father just you know he, he watched me and then he didn't say anything next month again you know i you know for the second meeting i i, I came back running from the office and you know went for the meeting and uh, you know again not nothing much uh, quite a few other things were discussed and you know hardly any cricket was discussed in that meeting i was there you know only for uh, for the sake of cricket you know i i was not interested in any other uh, thing as such and so i okay. i was a little disappointed okay. again and when i came back home my father asked me he was a man of very few words but he asked me he saw me dejected you know and he asked me uh, what happened so i said nothing much uh, you know in the meeting uh, there wasn't much cricket discuss you know Uh, he just you know very quietly he said helen you have better things to do in life <laughs> so so that was the you know that very very coolly very simple in simple words he just mentioned that uh, you have better things to do in life so you know i just took it and then you know i concentrated on few other things and you know that is how it is so, so i so thought you know that not, so did it lead you to move uh, you know to other sports as a sports manager in uh, tata motors telco as it was called then uh, or that was that was that a trigger actually uh, you know uh, i didn't know even where uh, telco was situated in pune you know we never got a uh, you know chance or uh, to uh, to go and uh, you know see where telco was but the destiny took me there you know uh, i was into a, a, a sports goods business and you know one day i it was a very small shop in kothrud and uh, i was without a job that time i was mm -hmm. without a job and in 1993 uh, i retired from first class cricket after playing uh, the finals at punjab and then uh, you know 94 95 96 you know i was without a job you know because yeah. uh, tomco was taken over by hindustan lever and uh, you know i was working for coach so you know we had to leave the job and you know coming from us you know a uh, uh, middle class family you know i had to uh, find some uh, job some work so i started uh, this sports goods shop and that's how i ended up uh, you know searching uh, telco i reached telco and then uh, i got into telco that that story is there in the in the book and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Uh, yeah but uh, i joined as a as a sports manager there you know a manager sports uh, where cricket was just one part you know we had about uh, 16 other games you know indoor games then athletics and uh, you know football uh, many other uh, events we had uh, swimming was there and so uh, then i had to uh, do justice to all sports you know i it's That's not that you know i could only look after cricket or, it was my job you know to look yeah. after uh, all the sport because tata motors pune had you know the strength of 15000 employees that time that time now it is yeah. maybe 10000 10 11000 but that time it was almost 15000 so we had to select teams for 15 uh, you know games uh, uh, within tata motors and you know send them to 
uh, inter tata uh, company uh, matches and inter uh, office matches so that, that that is how i got into uh, you know all other sure, sure. so let me bring back the discussion to you as the cricketer and i'm sure this question has been asked many times but uh, it's still worth asking is that you know of all the matches that you played at different levels and we'll come come to that uh, you know a little later uh, is there any you know if i have to ask you a question that which one is the most memorable match or innings for you uh, is, is, does anything strike out yeah uh, innings is different and the most memorable match is different you know innings okay. i can say that uh, uh, you know i always uh, remember or i i always rate my innings uh, when Maharashtra were struggling at uh, 44 for 5 uh, at Wankhede Stadium, I was the captain and, you know, we had decided to bat first on that, uh, you know, Wankhede Stadium wicket and it moved quite a bit on that uh, early morning and uh, we lost 5 wickets for 44 and I was uh, at the non-strikers and when, you know, Ka Pradeep Kasliwal got 3 wickets in 1 over and that was the 11th over of the match and, you know, uh, I, you know, uh, that day I just closed my eyes and I said, you know, I am the captain. I have decided to bat first on this wicket and we are 44 for 5. So I have to get 100 today. There is no option. And uh, that day I, I got 125, uh, which wow. I, I think that was one of my best innings uh, I played against, uh, you know, the difficult conditions. Yes. Sure, but sure. match, if you say, if you ask me, um, Surendra will also, uh, you know, uh, remember that match. It was a, a fantastic match that we played. Uh, it was a knockout. Uh, Surendra was captain of Maharashtra and uh, it was maybe 92-93 season. And uh, uh, we were playing against railways, uh, you know, uh, at uh, Nehru Stadium. And uh, see, th that day also the wicket wasn't uh, the best. You know, uh, it wasn't, uh, it had not dried up, uh, you know, or completely. There was a little bit of moisture and we lost three, four early wickets, uh, you know, in, in that uh, uh, while batting first. And thankfully, you know, our last four wickets added almost 200 runs. And, wow. you know, we, we could reach uh, about 405 or something, uh, which wasn't good enough on that wicket and on that uh, Nehru Stadium outfield. Because later on, the, the wicket improved after lunch and, you know, our tail enders, you know, they batted uh, very responsibly to get to take the score to 405 later on yeah uh, you know the they had one uh batsman you know abhay sharma or someone sharma i think was his name and uh you know he came out to bat and uh, uh you know we had uh iqbal siddiqui was uh, one of our fast bowlers and samir inamdar was another fast bowler uh we had santosh jede that year you know was doing exceptionally well he was bowling well and yeah. um at one stage, you know, at maybe it was end of uh, day two or day, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, end of day three maybe. And uh, 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 railways were uh, two, uh, 100 and, uh, 257 for the loss of five wickets. And they just needed 140 odd runs uh, to win with five wickets in hand. And this Sharma was, you know, batting uh, there on 90. And we had uh, completed bowling 78 overs. 78 overs um that day evening when we returned uh, you know uh, 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 is there a problem with millet's connection or no i guess there is a slight bandwidth issue at millet's end okay okay uh, the ball was due at uh, 75 and um, you know uh, jd had gone and uh, new ball was not taken and uh, the next day that evening we had a uh, you know meeting and uh, all the senior uh, selectors and uh, the team management they, they suggested that we should have taken the new ball uh, after 75 overs and uh, we should be taking it uh, you know next day morning straight away uh, yeah. Then you know everyone uh, was asked uh, his opinion, yeah. and uh, I I was the only one uh, you know that that day that I I felt that we should not be taking the new ball because we just had 140 odd runs and new ball you know it it, it will quickly uh, carry to the boundary you know uh, runs will come 
quicker and easier yeah that's yeah. what i felt uh, with the with the old ball you know they will have to hit the ball and you know to score runs and then uh, you know uh, that wouldn't be easy you know runs will not come that easy and then our chances will increase of mm. uh, you know uh, bowling mm. them more number of overs to get those 140 runs and then uh, our chances would also increase with that yeah, yeah so i said that you know i will not take the new ball but i was the only one to say that <laughs> and uh, you know my suggestion was i mean didn't find any uh, any support and so next day morning the the new ball was taken and iqbal siddiqui was hit for four fours in two overs oh. and then uh, samir inamdar was hit for four fours in two overs so four overs 40 runs were scored wow. with the new ball with the new ball and we just had 100 and odd runs to to play with so yeah, yeah. you know again the spinners came on to bowl and you know by lunch you know jd had taken another another three wickets so he had five wickets and, and i think satyan lande you know he uh, another option sure. he took so one did you, did you go on to win the match or? yes i'll tell you that you know at lunch they you know the, they had lost eight wickets and they needed uh, something like uh, uh, 16 runs to win and it, you know that that sharma was still batting on 160 uh -huh. uh, and then after lunch when the match started you know uh, uh, the other guy other uh, partner of uh, sharma he hit two boundaries and then uh, when uh, jade bolt you know he he was hit for two boundaries so you know 16 runs scored just four or five runs to win so all the fielders were brought in rai was bowling from uh, from the far end and i was feeling at short extra cover and he had bowled rai had bowled well in the in the uh, you know first session you know he had bowled very tight so he had bowled with six fielders on the offside and three on the on and i suggested you know that i should we should have five uh, now on the off and four on the on and i moved from uh, you know short extra cover to short mid wicket and uh, the talender you know talender uh, you know he got uh, the last batsman iqbal thakur or something you know he he tried to hit and i caught it at at short mid wicket and we won oh. that match by three or four runs it was wow. you know uh, it was a fantastic match uh, you know uh, so uh, we had so lost we, it at some stage but uh, yeah. we came back and we win that yes so, it was uh, a knockout two, game yeah two things will in i always admire when i speak to you know or hear people uh, talking about their old kind of matches that the kind of uh, statistics and the numbers all of you still remember for matches that took place maybe 25 30 years ago that's very admirable uh, the second thing you interesting point you mentioned I, and i was to uh, you know come to that you mean you know it's very interesting for people in pune to imagine that nehru stadium cricket pitch had any texture at all because it's always called a pata flat wicket kind of thing so uh, that brings me to uh, a question you know because there are in the book there are several instances that you mentioned that uh, you know you had this innate kind of skill to judge the pitch better than many others uh, contemporaries in your in your team at that point in time and you went out of turn to even make suggestions either in the team meetings or on the field uh, kind of thing so how do you develop that kind of knack to read the pitch as they say in today's terms does it come only from experience or yeah it does come uh, you know see like uh, i can say that uh, whenever we played for pune club you know uh, early is uh, uh, in the during the rainy season you know uh, it uh, invariably it rained on on saturday and then the wicket used to be wet so what uh, the inspection used to be after one hour or you know we wanted to play the match you we always wanted to play so what we used to do is you know we used to uh, prepare uh, a, a simultaneously a, a, a wicket you know next to the uh, the proper wicket that was already prepared so mm -hmm. uh, because and then we used to cut the grass roll it and you know try to uh, make the game uh, possible so we, uh, we used to work on the wicket we never uh, mind rolling ourselves or you know cutting the grass and talking to uh, the groundsman also you know helped quite a bit you know when i played cricket in bombay you know i used to talk to the groundsman sit with them and you know talk to them then how they water how they uh, you know how they lay the wicket and how they prepare the wicket yeah. so all that you know information uh, you know uh, i had gathered and over a period of time you know if you are really involved thoroughly then you know you will uh, 
you know you will know what how the wicket will behave at least you know three four times out of five your your judgments will will come right yes okay lovely so you know you have to be curious you know to ask questions talk to a large number of people and understand what's going on to sort of be a good judge in terms of the the, the, the field or the pitch rather okay uh, talking of uh, pitches uh, you know uh, in the book you've mentioned a couple of times and i wanted to ask that question to you after reading the book is uh, you seem to have some soft corner for moti bag in vadodara what's so great about uh, moti bag palace uh, ground and why why that soft corner uh, soft corner uh, you can say you know i played my second uh, ranji trophy match at moti bag palace uh, i had scored 0 and 21 at sholapur in my de debut match and from there we uh, went to play against baroda at uh, at moti bag palace it's a beautiful ground uh, you know it is uh, in the mid of a forest actually and oh. uh, you know lovely trees right round and it is a beautiful setup and you know they used to have that shamiana as a uh, as a, um, a changing room and beautiful setup uh, you i loved playing there and because i uh, you know there i got my first uh, first class century and maharashtra at lunch uh, we were struggling at 79 for 5 and uh, you know vinit wadkar again there he had taken five you know three wickets in one over and uh, you know again we were struggling at 79 for 5 at lunch and from there i went on to score 131 not out that was my first century uh, you know in first class cricket And oh, later okay. on, I I uh, went on to you know score one more hundred there one one fifty six not out and uh, I always enjoyed playing there. The, I enjoyed the setup there, the lovely trees and uh, it's an English setup. So I I loved. Uh, okay, okay. So your so your first first class hundred there. was great. So obviously, uh, there is an emotional connect there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Yes. Yes. Now uh, let me try if I can bowl you a googly. Uh, you know. Uh, between you as a batter batsman and you as a leg spinner who who where where would your vote go because you know you've excelled in both you've taken wickets at critical juncture you've scored centuries at critical juncture you won matches because of your bowling you won matches because of your batting adwaita uh, let me be very honest that i used to bowl good leg spin uh, in school days and when i came up uh, you know after schools I, i i took plenty of wickets in my in school cricket but later on when i came to uh, university level you know i i saw that uh, you know there were quite a few seniors uh, you know who were all, also bowling leg spin in the team and i uh, rarely got uh, to bowl i used to get two three overs you know at the end of uh, the session or at the end of the day and uh, you know maybe i would finish one wicket or two wickets uh, for uh, you know 10 12 15 runs but i was and then i was getting to bat at number 9 or 10 you know in the pune university team so for me it was you know little i was uh, disappointed i didn't know what to do there were two three senior uh, leg spinners you know playing for uh, maharashtra ranji trophy that time so i had to decide whether i should uh, you know concentrate on my bowling or i should concentrate on my batting so later on i i thought you know it is better uh, you know i concentrate on my batting so i literally uh, you know uh, gave up uh, my bowling and then okay. uh, concentrated concentrated on my batting yeah okay okay lovely uh, you mentioned in terms of you know disappointment you know as a cricketer as a sports person a lot of hr people here a lot of students in the in the on the call today all of us go through highs and lows uh, you know so uh, my question is uh, you know how do you cope with those highs and lows i mean coping with highs is perhaps easier you know you're doing good uh, you know in all aspects of what you're doing but you know especially when you are on low and you know it's good to say that you know uh, form versus class and all that part but at the end of the day sometimes your career is on the line your selection is on the line you you been through a huge kind of disappointment like like you mentioned where everybody in the world and their uncles perhaps expected you to be chosen in that uh, you know get, getting you getting an india cap for england and uh, you know how did you cope with that because you know uh, how, what did you do uh, how much time did you did, did it take uh, and i i know and i'll come back to that question because you know that was the same time when you got a chance to uh, play for uh, professional cricket in ireland 
but uh, before that how did you because perhaps I, I would imagine that was the largest disappointment for you and uh, as a professional as a sports person what are the learnings for any of us in terms of how to cope with such a huge kind of disappointment how did you cope with it how much time did it take yeah <laughs> Yeah, I had uh, put in a lot of effort, uh, you know, uh, reaching that level. I had, uh, you know, uh, done reasonably well in 1984 on the tour of Zimbabwe. And then uh, following season 1985, I I was, I think, one of the top scorers in India in the, the domestic cricket. And, uh, you know, I like everybody else, I was also hopeful of, uh, you know, the, making it to the Indian team. But uh, somehow that didn't happen. Uh, see, now you have to accept the facts and move on. Uh, you know, that is one thing. You definitely get disappointed. I was disappointed. I kept my, you know, kit back uh, on the shelf and I, I never uh, wanted to take it uh, back again and, you know, touch the kit back again. I went to Bombay, I remember. I went uh, for my cousin's uh, wedding. Uh, my cousin's sister's wedding and uh, you know the, uh, that's what uh, helped me helped me a little bit you know i spent a few days in in uh, uh, bombay and i was away from cricket i didn't want to play cricket for for quite some time mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely i was disappointed but uh, see you have to accept you know how to uh, uh, cope with bad patch or uh, you know when you are doing badly Yes, I can say that, uh, you know, you uh, go back to your basics, you know, try and concentrate on your basics, uh, try to do the, uh, you know, the, the small, small things correct and concentrate on the ball. If you are a batsman, concentrate on the ball. If you are a bowler, you know, concentrate on your action. And, uh, you know, that would certainly help. If your basics are, if you worked on the basics, you are, uh, you know, you will get out of the bad patch earlier than most okay. other batsmen. Okay. So okay. that is how I look at it. So you should sure, work sure. more on your basics, which would definitely yeah. help. Yes. Sure. Now, uh, I know for a fact that you and Kiran Morey were our very close friends and it, because of Kiran, uh, he got selected and he, you know, you got that opportunity to play in Ireland. How was that experience? Take us through that experience because, you know, uh, suddenly you're into professional cricket in a foreign country where by the language uh, you know the accent is something is something that you really don't uh, quite quickly get it how was that experience and this was of course way back when you know uh, there was very less media exposure and so there was no nothing called social media in any case yeah i mean even before me uh, quite a few uh, cricketers even from maharashtra had uh, uh, played cricket uh, professional cricket in uh, in the uk uh, raju balekar used to go uh, yeah. I remember uh, Yajuendra saying they all had gone and played, uh, you know, professional cricket in the UK. I got this opportunity because Kiran More was supposed to, he had signed for that club, Kolarin Cricket Club. And uh, then he got picked for the 85-86, uh, that tour of uh, England. And so, uh, you know, he offered me uh, to, to go as a replacement for him. Uh, and then uh, it, it was some experience because... You know, uh, I was playing uh, later on in Bombay uh, when it was for, uh, time shift. It was about 42 degrees there, you know, and I traveled uh, uh, to Northern Ireland and it was maybe six, seven degrees there. And uh, hmm. there, the, you know, the, 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 the uh, North Sea, the, the winds coming from the North Sea, the, even the temperature is seven. You know, that the chill in the air is, you know, it's really biting and it's uh, sure, freezing. Sure. So I was playing, I when I reached uh, Belfast at, at night around 11 o'clock and the, the, the club uh, secretary and the, and the, uh, the president uh, that time, you know, uh, Gavin Craig, he had come to receive me. So then uh, there was a drive of almost one hour to, uh, you know, cold rain. So, and I slept, hardly slept that night and next day morning we were playing. And uh, oh. it was freezing cold, absolutely freezing cold. And I didn't, I was not prepared. You know, I bought a few uh, bullies on the way to the ground and I, you know, played uh, cricket. That See, it's a different cricket uh, there, you know, like people expect uh, the professional to, to perform every match. You know, they want, they look at you as, uh, you know, as if you have to win the match for them each and every time. So, mm. you know, there's a lot of uh, pressure on you. There is a lot of responsibility on you. 
and see uh, uh, when you are paid for doing uh, certain things you know when you are paid for playing you know that that kind of pressure is different you know yeah. i experienced that first time there yeah i think we lost him again yes a slight bandwidth issue yeah was coming possible to coming after came so slowly that i was like really and all just was lob no i went to mid off mid on and it got uh, three times hello yeah we can hear you maybe uh, there's some uh, hello connectivity issue on the video side we can hear you milin hello yeah we can hear you yeah uh, i see the the colrin uh, static practice wicket and i was uh, batting well uh, at wicket and uh, it was not wicket uh, and uh, you know where at well use uh, confidence both ball spins and uh, then uh, four match uh, got few runs i tried to hit the ball rather than uh, i could score 30 odd uh, i Ball over the field and, uh, uh, runs and we won that match. And I never looked back and I uh, kept runs. And that year, you know, a successful season. Sure. And I believe you helped them win the local tourney, yeah. which they never, never achieved, never, never even dreamt of. Yes, that was the year Colrin won the, the senior cup. You know, it was, yeah. uh, and they had never won that before. They they could never come in and. and so that was the only year uh, colrin near cup uh, uh, you know win for them yeah sure sure okay uh, i think we are uh, running out of time but one last question in a different role that you played post your retirement is you also became a match referee for the bcci for a couple of uh, matches so what is exactly this role of match referee i mean one look only reads about it or sees on the tv screen that this is a match referee for this match what does a match referee do <clears throat> a match referee has all the powers all the powers of the match you know when i reached uh, uh, lucknow i remember i was uh, doing this uh, south zone east zone match dulip trophy match and mm -hmm. you know the play i reached uh, one day before the match and uh, straight to the ground and the, the ground and the wicket conditions were quite good but people the players were complaining about the staying arrangements there and you know the travel time and all that they you know that the uh, uh, team had uh, 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 vvs lakshman and anil kumble and uh, dravid in the team and uh, east zone had saurav ganguly in the team it was a star studded team and uh, both the teams were put up in one hotel which was little far off you know 10 kilometers away from the ground and uh, both the uh, players team players you know complained about uh, the stay so i said okay you carry on with your uh, practice i will see what can be done so i left uh, from the ground and i uh, searched for another other, other two hotels one or two hotels uh, in lucknow and then uh, i reached uh, the uh, the hotel where the teams were put up there i ordered some uh, tea or coffee and uh, with some sandwich and uh, then uh, it took uh, more than 20 25 minutes for me to get and then i saw the rooms also rooms were also very small the, those days you know uh, uh, this senior cricketers would carry with uh, you know big coffins and uh, then there was hardly any room left uh, you know to move around in the rooms the rooms were smaller so you know the, their uh, complaints were genuine so i shifted both the teams from that hotel to other hotel and then they were ha quite happy so uh, see match referee can uh, make any arrangements uh, change in the arrangements he can uh, report on the pitch as well as on the umpires also umpire the standard of umpiring and the behavior of players you know everything it's a match referee has quite okay. a few uh, uh, powers uh, that was a, you know big experience for me sure yeah. sure thanks thanks for that uh, milin i think we can continue with this conversation for long but we have to be mindful of the time 
So, uh, you know, uh, thanks yes. uh, very much for this uh, lovely kind of dialogue that you had and shared your experiences. But I need to move on to our uh, panelists, get them in and, uh, you know, understand from them as well. So uh, that brings me to introducing our uh, other three panelists. Um, so up front is uh, Sunandan Lele. Uh, uh, many of us know who he is. He's a, you know, one of cricket's most sought after and veteran uh, kind of uh, cricket journalist or sports journalist, I should say. Uh, started off with, uh, you know, for people who are as perhaps as old as me and more, uh, they would remember Shatkar and Kesri, of course. But uh, he's also done his things with BBC and ABC. Uh, he has a few unique distinctions of, uh, you know, traveling all over the world, maybe a couple of more times in every cricket playing nation and continent. And of the hundred odd centuries Sachin has uh, scored, uh, Sunandan seems to have uh, seen live at least 80 of them. Uh, I'm not sure how many of us even have seen 80 on the TV, but uh, to see them live uh, is uh, fantastic. Uh, and of course, before that, he has, uh, you know, represented Maharashtra in the under-19 uh, uh, level, in fact, captained them as well and was in the under-19 Indian camp uh, uh, in terms of cricket as well. So thanks, Sunandan, for your time and welcome to Between the Lines. Pleasure. Next up is uh, Surendra Bhave. Uh, his name was mentioned when, when I was speaking to Milind. Uh, like uh, Milind, he has also been a first-class cricketer, played and more importantly, captain for Maharashtra for quite some time. Uh, he has a phenomenal uh, cricketing average of 58. And remember, this is in those days, uh, not these days, uh, when, you know, even uh, three per, per per over was a great kind of thing, uh, kind of thing. And, uh, you know, for consistently for many years, he was scoring more than 800 runs uh, in Ranji matches for nearly four five years. And that's a huge kind of uh, prolific run-getter uh, as he, he was called. Uh, he went on to coach... Uh, the Maharashtra Ranji team as well and, and has played as a role of a national selector for BCCI in many years. And coincidentally, while our uh, panel discussion is being called 22 Yards and Beyond, uh, Surendra's Academy is also called 22 Yards Cricket Academy. And uh, he, you know, the out, you know, outcome of uh, um, of the many is uh, players that we all know, which is Kedar Zadav and Ruturaj Gaikwad. And thanks to IPL, we know, of course, all these players now. So thanks, Surendra, for your time and welcome to Between the Lines. And Thank you. last but not the least, uh, we have Abhay Akte, uh, uh, a unique combination. And I'm going to ask him the question about a lawyer and a cricket administrator. He has been a president of Maharashtra Cricket Association. He served on marketing and legal committees for BCCI no for many years. Uh, he was the chairman of the governing board at the Deccan Jim Khan Club in Pune and, uh, you know, is also the president of a uh, educational trust that uh, sort of uh, owns and operates a very prestigious uh, school in Pune called Apte Prashala and Junior College. So uh, Abhay, welcome uh, and thanks for your time. Thank you. uh, and welcome to Between the Lines. Thank you, thank you. Okay, lovely. So uh, maybe Sunandan, uh, I'll start with you. Uh, and we just heard Milind and in our offline conversation, uh, you wanted to say something about this art of captaincy. So maybe I'll start with that, that uh, what's exactly this art of captaincy that you as a journalist and having worked with so many or having interacted, interviewed, spent a lot of quality time with so many uh, cricketers uh, of, over the last 30 years. What is this art of captaincy? Adwait, I particularly remember one incident which happened on the PYC ground. We were playing a, a six-a-side tournament that happens uh, used to happen on a Dasera day. And okay. Puna Club, he was leading uh, Milin Gunjar, and we were uh, playing against him. And uh, that tournament was quite unique. And uh, Puna Club's wicketkeeper was uh, Bhupendra Sharma. He was uh, fondly called as Chotu Sharma. And okay. uh, Milin observed that a particular player from his own side was often throwing ball erratically at the wicketkeeper. Okay. And Milin didn't say anything, but during the break, he asked that player to wear wicket keeping gear, pads and gloves. And he, he was baffled that why Milin is asking him to put on wicket keeping gear. And uh -huh. then he uh, threw ball at each of his players and asked all of them to 
shoot stumps and throw erratically at that particular player. And that player was uh, was in total discomfort. And then Milin caught his collar and said, now you realize, you fool, <laughs> you were throwing the ball at Bhupendra Sharma and not realizing that this was not on. So that, these are the small things it uh, keeps in your mind. And second Love. most importantly, you should have asked him to sing a Talat Lehmut song. <laughs> he was a brilliant Talat Mahmood singer. I like Surendra Rao. He is a brilliant Sudhir Phadke singer. So okay. Talat Mahmood, he used to sing brilliant Talat Mahmood songs. Maybe we can have a separate Ankachiri session later. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. That's a brilliant anecdote to start with, Pinatam. Thank you. Uh, Abhay, coming to you now, I think I, I mentioned that in the introduction as well. What's this <laughs> interesting combination of being a lawyer and being a cricket administrator? You know, I, 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 I can see that you've joined this from your office and all those typical lawyer books are behind you. So what's this combination? Uh, thank you, Advait. And let me tell you that there are books inside. It's not only the cover. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see, lawyer is a very, very interesting, versatile qualification. Some people will ask me, how come you are a cricket administrator? Look, I was a lawyer yesterday. I am a lawyer today. And I'll remain lawyer tomorrow. You will find many lawyers doing this versatile job. You will find many of them being ministers, uh, again going back to the court and uh, taking their gown and starting with their practice. I will give you one example. A few years ago, uh, the law minister of India, I don't want to name him. Of course, most of them are brilliant lawyers. He met me during some election or something. And he said, Vakil sahab, aapki wakalat teen mene ke liye ban kar do. I said, how can I do it? So he said, what is great about it? I am a law minister today, so I am not going to the courts. Tomorrow, though, I appoint some other law, uh, person as a law minister. I will go to the court. It's a matter of two months. You will pick up your practice. Next three months, you will cross all the records. So being lawyer is on the, on the lighter side. I have said this, but being lawyer is of great help because if you talk about cricket, cricket is played only on the grounds and courts today. Sure. These oh, are the no. only two places where cricket is. So I am okay. taking care of the other side. I'll 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 come back, I'll come back to this uh, quote of yours being played in court. Okay, lovely. Uh, Surendra, coming to you. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, you, you you've been obviously a prolific player. You've been a very successful captain, then a coach and a selector. Uh, of these three four roles that you played in your cricketing and professional journey, uh, which one you believe is the toughest? Uh, good question, Adwait. I must give you that. It's a very good question. Um, I think as a player, uh, you are often told to control the controllables. Okay. And even as a uh, you know Indian selector, you are only controlling the controllables. Uh, for a cricketer, what is a controllable? Uh, controllable is how he behaves and how he plays and how he handles pressure on the ground. Whereas umpiring decision pitches. Uh, whether all those things are non-controllables, okay? Um, as a as a selector, the, even the you know even the commercial part is a byproduct, and you have to play well to to make money. Even if you you know talk about money, uh, yeah. when it comes to uh, being a selector, being a selector means I think the controllable is how much can you travel and how many live matches you can watch, and if you're lazy with that. You are not going to look at the quant quality part of a player, and and then you would rather have a computer selecting the team. Uh, yeah. But if you want to sort of describe a qualitative winning, or you want to describe a spell where the opposition was bowled out with some quality bowling, and at the same time when the bowler was bowling an outstanding spell, how was he in the field? Because he is only a bowler for six balls. Was he good enough in the field after his bowl uh, over was bowled? All those qualitative things can only be watched. And that is why I think you still have five national selectors. And even five at times, they are, they are you know, hard pressed to cover the entire country. Okay. So for okay. selector, that is a controllable. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. What a select, I think the selector's biggest value is sitting down on that table and coming out with the best Indian cricket team. Yeah. And yeah. not even to think once about where you come from or can you push your own agenda. You sure. know, that's yeah. so he brings honesty to the table. Uh, yeah. So these are the control. As a coach, I feel um, 
the controllables and non-controllables, the uh, the ratio actually goes a little bit haywire, uh, okay. if you know what I mean. I yeah. think coach has so many non-controllables yeah. uh, that uh, it is only certain things which, you know, putting the teams through the right rituals, making sure that, uh, you know, he controls the team. Control is probably the wrong word. He maneuvers the team in such a manner that everybody is happy. Uh, the biggest sure. virtue for a modern cricketer is to handle all the egos in the team and yeah. how to yeah. keep them uh, in, sort of in check and how okay. to utilize them for the best results. Okay. Sure. Sure. But uh, since coach is the guy who only sits on the fence and doesn't control the actual play. Uh, the non-controllable part of coaching goes uh, quite higher in this uh, yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and hence, I think, hence, I think you, uh, you think, you feel that the coaches have to be paid very well because oh, yeah. it's a very, very, uh, it's a job which can, you can lose in a minute. Okay, sure. and because yes. of non, a lot of non-controllable issues, and that's why you hear these salaries. You know what these big coaches get is for that, uh, because when you work in a bank, you are almost assured of a of a service of say 30 years, 40 years. You get your gratuity, you get your pension. You know, if you don't do anything really, really wrong, you never get sacked. Okay. So, um, as a selector, what I feel is you have to bring honesty to the job, and and that's why you can only do four years of being a selector, because it's sure. usually perceived to be that if you're a selector for more than four years, then vested interests might you know start hampering your decision. I'll I'll, okay. I'll, I'll come back yeah. to interesting points. So that's today. that's my comparison of these three jobs. Sure. I've enjoyed sure. all three. There's no doubt okay. about that. Uh, yeah. I'm I always. Uh, uh, enjoy the challenge uh, of being a coach more than anything else. Okay, and that's okay. why I've, I've, I've enjoyed it more. Some people okay. uh, actually take up the jobs which are lighter on responsibility and you are not directly accountable. Uh, but the yeah. coach is always and always directly accountable. And I like that accountability. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Sunandan, I mean, uh, you know, uh, as a journalist, a lot of people might want to be journalists. I mean, I'll take you back to your start of your career. How did you choose to be a sports journalist? What went through your mind and is, how did you choose that as a career option, if I can ask that? No, that wasn't my career option. I'm an accidental journalist. My okay. bread and butter was advertising. I used to generate revenues for media groups. I was okay. ad manager of a media group. And okay. uh, writing came naturally to me. Having played cricket, I knew, I know my cricket well, so writing came naturally to me. So cricket writing, although it was my passion, not my profession, for, okay. uh, uh, from 1986 when I joined Kesri, I started writing on my own. And from 1986 to 2007, I was a passionate cricket uh, journalist, not a professional cricket journalist. And in okay. 2007, I switched uh, to a professional journalist. So okay. honestly speaking, I haven't had any uh, official education related to journalism. And um, I, let me confess, I'm an accidental journalist. <laughs> okay. You know, very interestingly, Sudhantan, a couple of months ago, a very good friend of yours, uh, Vikram Satye, was on, on our program. And he sort of took us through exactly the same kind of thing where he said, I'm an accidental cricket comic. I mean, like you, he was uh, an ad man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was a media person and then he, he, he went on to what he is now. Great, lovely. Uh, Abhay, coming to back to you, uh, you know, we've heard the cricket administrator. What exactly is a cricket administrator? How do you work an administrator? You know, you're not a player, you're not a captain, you're not a coach, you're not a selector. What is this cricket administrator? There are two clear things which have been uh, made very clear since beginning and after the LODA committee report, whatever level they are being applied. Uh, cricket is being handled by cricketers, at least it is expected. And administration is another part. Uh, okay. What happens is, an administrator, uh, uh, if you talk about the current constitution, because you may ask me how you became administrator, then we, yeah, I have yeah. to continue the theme of accidents, which uh, Sunandan has started, and say that I was a lawyer, 
and I was representing one side in the litigation. Eventually, I was asked that no, no, you start working with us because you are a lawyer and you are conducting many sports related matters. Then okay. I joined them. Then later on, I became part of the managing committee. And uh, as uh, Justice Loda gave, uh, the Supreme Court gave a judgment that those who have completed nine years cannot remain. So I suddenly became the president. And of course, from 2013, I was part of BCCI committees because I was representing Maharashtra, etc. So administrators are two types. One is those who go through the electoral method, which is traditionally there in BCCI. But yeah. as per the new constitution of uh, which has been amended since Loda Committee's report, there are positions like CFO, CEO, then different five general managers, and which are completely professional. So if you look at BCCI, BCCI is completely professionally managed, we must say, because they have CEO, they have got CFO, they have got a team of managers who take care of all their activities. And the, 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 the world uh, most wealthiest uh, board, which is BCCI, is there because of the efforts, because of the talent, and because of the foresight of administrators which have come in there. See, today, I'll take one more minute only. Today, when you look at the board, you say, oh, they are cozy club. It's a club of cozy. It's a sort of yeah, cozy yeah. club. No doubt we create a perception by the way in which we behave, by the way in which we conduct ourselves. But remember, by 1993, this same board was having loss of 10,000 lakhs of rupees. It was not having 25,000 crores, or it was not having 10,000 crores in the bank. It had a loss of 80, 000, 80 lakhs of rupees, if you see the books of accounts. Okay. So thanks to the administrators who converted the media rights as a revenue source, mm. fought with the court, went up to Supreme Court, challenged Doordarshan, challenged Prasar Bharti bill, and that is how we are here. We'll talk about yeah, that yeah. maybe later. But sure, administrators, sure. those who are aspiring, it is there in the constitution. Uh, so there are two types. If you see how you become a minister, then I cannot tell you that, you know, you have to give this examination, you have to do this. So administrators, okay. because you, the, they, they get up through and, the council. And this, yeah, please. this financial turnaround obviously is pre-IPL. Pre-IPL. I'm talking yeah. about 1993. That is pre-IPL. Yeah. Yeah. When people like, I think, Dalmiyaji was the secretary. So that, you know, before that, Durdashan used to take 5 lakhs of rupees per match from BCCI for showing it on their TV. Okay. From them, they have turned the tables and now they get uh, billions of dollars because yes, everyone an Indian who stays wherever has, is absolutely crazy about this game. So when we talk about Cozy Club, maybe there are a few people who behave like that. But at the same time, there were people who had the foresight of converting this into a money, uh, you know, generating uh, scheme. So that, that sure. credit goes to, of course, IPL is the next... Uh, uh, ch uh game changer but the first yeah. was this, this media first rights. was uh, and so that's why Lovely. if somebody Lovely. wants to become an administrator today why cricket there is also a game like kabaddi which is being uh sought after which is being yeah. being completely professional then professional soccer of course uh, please uh, keep quiet during pandemic <laughs> yeah of course okay <laughs> Uh, Surendra, coming to you, and you you yeah. gave a fantastic uh, you know description in terms of different roles and the challenges and you know what is control level and not. But coming back to you as a player uh, and as a captain on the field, you know as spectators, you know even on TV also, if there's a normal match, test match, say we see what is happening between say 9:30 and 5, except for the breaks kind of thing. But yeah. as a player and as a captain, how does it, on a typical match day, how does your day start? What goes on? before you come on the field either for batting or fielding what what goes on behind the scenes as you know as, 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 a, as a spectator we don't know all that but it's a great chance to you know ask a player like you well i think each player has his own way of uh, uh, spending time uh, leading up to the match and mm -hmm. obviously once you are in a you know regimental uh, setup when when the warm-up starts at eight o'clock and then the warm-ups are done then you do some of your drills and then you hit the match and uh, post match now essentially they have ice bath all of them yeah ice bath is something which our viewers may not know about but uh, uh, there's a barrel which is uh, half full with water and half with ice and it okay. actually gives you the fastest recovery so that's also part of the ritual or the routine of a cricketer after the match 
and then or there's always the, the the part where they have the snacks and go back to their hotel rooms and once you go back to the hotel room uh, uh, i think uh, the coaches and the and the players have a very similar uh, routine you know because okay. both, both need to take their mind away from cricket for a while Okay. And as, as you call it, the clean slate uh, to to turn up fresh every morning. So both have to do uh, the relaxation part in their own way, in their own style. Uh, have an early dinner. Okay, uh, a lot of players I know uh, do meditation, uh, which also helps you to to recover your body quickly. Uh, yeah. And uh, as it is quoted by yoga masters, that if you do the shavasana dhyan very well then you actually recover almost an hour, hour and a half of sleep. Uh, so if you've done it in the evening, then you have had your meal and then you go to bed, you can actually relax so well that you start the day afresh. Same, oh, wow. applies, to the Same applies to the player. Uh, early meal is a, is a very, very important ritual. And sure. even from the days of Ayurveda, we know that, you know, everyone from our, uh, you know, our parents, they always ate at 7.38, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, is, which is the ideal time to do it. People do have their own ways of relaxing. Some like the yeah. music, some like watching the television, uh, yeah. you know, uh, some like sitting with friends and enjoying uh, whatever they enjoy every evening. So it's yeah. it, it all differs like that. But so it's basically aimed... And, what you're trying uh, to say is that the relaxation relax. is important between the two days. Yeah, and taking your mind away from cricket for a while. That's yeah. what clears your mind. So it's it's yeah. very important that uh, your the decisions you are likely to uh, likely to take the next day on a cricket field yeah. as a player and as a coach are not affected too much by the history of that particular match or the long distance history. Sure. Uh, it's important sure. that you know you're sort of switched on. Uh, when the game starts, even as a player and as a uh, uh, even as a uh, you know, but, a uh, part let of me, let me let me interrupt you here because you know uh, you know we always see people taking fresh guard. You know, uh, yeah. uh, if I'm, if I'm 95 not out on, overnight, uh, yeah. do I get a good night's sleep? And you know, does can I really relax? Uh, you know, those kind of things. Or you know, even after the batsman scores a century. Many times you yeah. see even you know, people like Sachin taking actually physically taking that fresh guard kind of thing. Yeah. Is, it, is, yeah. it, is it symbolism or does it really help? It's a mental switch on. It's a switch. Okay. Uh, now many a times people have this uh, uh, habit of getting out in thirties and forties. Mm -hmm. What do the good coaches tell them when you reach your thirty? If you do, if it's if it's your lucky day as a professional cricketer, and if you reach thirty. Uh, make sure you ask for a leg guard again, start afresh, and score another 30. Okay. That, that's what makes you go to 60. Okay. So it's a mental switch. It's a mental switch. When you take a fresh guard, uh, even after lunch, sometimes people do that. You know, there are not many people who bat the entire day anymore, but there are still some who believe in that theory or that style of batting. Uh, so, uh, you know, overnight, you, you go out, uh, you've got 100 under your belt, you still are asked for a Lexton guard, you know, yeah, yeah. and sometimes okay. you actually see the markings of your own guard on the pitch when you've gone there the next time. But you still have yeah. to go through the ritual of telling your body and brain that here I go again. This is the start. I want to score another century today. OK, yeah, yeah. and that's how it, the mind works in a very uh, a very funny way uh, uh, and and you have to sometimes and the switch on and switch off bit is now a little bit old what they call now is switch up and switch down okay, okay? so okay. when you take a leg stump it's a switch up okay lovely okay uh sunandan i mean uh, as a journalist on the ground how does your day how, how does your day start when does it start you know take us through a typical match day for you when you're at the stadium uh, I have a particular habit of going to the ground very early because I love watching uh, practice sessions because that will okay. tell you many stories. Um, so I will land up at the ground, say, at least an hour, uh, hour and a half uh, before the match starts. And okay. then from the start of the match till lunch, I will roam around. I will chat with spectators. 
I will chat with uh, selectors. I will chat with former players. Uh, then I will have a light lunch because uh, I have to keep myself away. So <laughs> from there on uh, till tea, again, I will roam around. I will gather my thoughts. I will write two side lights, not related to match, but in and around the match. And from T onwards, I will start uh, writing about what I'm supposed to write as a match copy. But mm -hmm. uh, during the entire day, uh, I will make it sure that if I'm covering a test match, I will not miss a single ball. Uh, oh, okay. That has got a, I've got that particular habit that, uh, again, the same like a batsman, switch on, switch off. I will switch off the moment the ball is bold. But again, I will concentrate as a journalist and watch the, that particular delivery and i will keep on noting important points because oh, i love to keep my hard disk free and that will okay. give uh, me energy uh, and ideas about how i'm going to start my copy how i'm going to build that copy and how i'm going to end my copy so okay. that is that is a particular ritual and again uh, after the match, the most important part for a journalist is to attend a press conference and ask an important but interesting question. Yeah. So yeah. that the player will laugh, he will be happy and he will answer. It should be a case that your question is for 10 seconds and he will answer for 5 minutes. Most of the cases, uh, journalists will do other way around. They'll ask questions uh, okay. for 2 minutes and the player will say, oh, I'm happy and the over and out for that. So I will, yeah. I will think hard how I'm going to ask an interesting question. And that is a normal ritual. And uh, after finishing my copy around say, uh, hour and hour and a half uh, after the last ball is bowled, I will come back to the room and relax. Okay, okay. Very interesting thing you mentioned about press conference. Interestingly, today only I think Naomi, Osaka Naomi, the cricket, uh, the tennis player has uh, come out very heavily on press conferences. Kind of thing so it shouldn't happen that you know somebody is down and out somebody has been you know uh, lost a match or has been really clobbered by the opposite team and you're saying going with the thing that that cannot happen i i will narrate a quickly i would like to narrate a small uh kissa about cricket uh we yes, were please. in australia and uh, it was i think 2014 tour and uh problem here was that their tail enders were really buggering us and our tail enders were winding up. So our score used to be, say, 275 for five and all out 320, 340. Yeah, and yeah. on the other side of the coin, Australia's score would be, say, 170 for six and they will end up 380. Oh, so okay. I, I, was, I was thinking about how I should ask this question to Mahendra Singh Dhoni and he shouldn't be pissed off. So I asked a question in typical Lele style. Ask, ask him that, Unki pooch Hanuman jaisi, Hamari pooch Doberman jaisi, ye samasya hal kaise hogi? <laughs> so he started asking and then he gave me a very, very interesting answer. So these are the kind of uh, things I do often so that uh, the atmosphere at the press conference is on the lighter side, but I ask a particular pinpointed question, but in yeah. a hilarious way. Yeah, lovely, lovely, okay. Abhay, uh, you know, Surendra and Sunandan have taken us through their match day, you know, as a player, as a journalist, now as a cricket administrator and the role that you've described, you know, obviously your day in office will be very different if there's a match that you're organizing or hosting versus if there's no match. As an administrator, take us through your match day, typically. Uh, Advai, see, uh, Suren and uh, Sunandan, both of them work in their individual capacities. They are, they are individually there. But yeah. when you work for an organization and when you climb the ladders, when you become, say, president, then the role is completely different. Sure. Role is different sure. in the sense we have got a team to work for you. You have got your PR, you have got your event manager. If it is a BCCI match, they have got full-fledged activities, they have got full-fledged team to support you. It is If it is an IPL, then you know, uh, people like IMG who have generated this idea, they also come and help us. But then there is a difference. The yeah. difference is, for any small thing that goes wrong, you become responsible. So that <laughs> responsibility is extremely high for things which even you do not know. Yeah. Something like, you know, for every cricket match, there will be an agitation. 
and it will be covering all the political parties all caste creed gender there will be an agitation yeah. because if you do something with cricket you get the publicity then there will be some media reports always creating some noise because then it is a cricket match so everybody can do it yeah. then handling cricket match is one thing where we have got competent people who will cricket you know will be curators who will take care of the ground etc but then something like distributing passes something like handling with excise officer handling police officers handling uh, commissioner's office handling charity so so income tax so there are many such issues which are completely different so the so the routine of a person gets uh, completely bogged down during last 5 6 7 8 days because then you will be proceeding further you have to take pre match uh, press conference then you have to go there you have to be there i'll be narrating some incidents which which will be lifetime experiences uh, how you get out of it so okay. for a for an administrator there is a team and sure. but at the same time the responsibility becomes absolutely high for things which you, even you do not know there is a yeah. fire at the flag end and you are not sitting there there are volunteers there are people but then as the president you are responsible for that sure 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 so, That is the difference. Now, now, I, now I know. Now I know why you give the light. Lele wants to give a counter here. Also, he doesn't want to stop. No, 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 no. <laughs> he has he has played this down because on the day of the or, or day before the match or even on the day of the match when the match is happening in your own city, distributing passes is the biggest nightmare. I'm telling you because on It's the like day it. of the match, a friend of mine. Came to my house and says, "Sunandan, I just want four passes." So I was so angry and pissed off. I told him, "Ki, yar, four passes to nahi hai. Main aisa karta hu. Do ko team me khila deta hu. Do ko pass deta hu." <laughs> okay, uh, Surendra, uh, coming back to the cricket part of it. I mean, in today's yeah. times, today's players, there's a lot of technology available for all your team meetings, analysis, slow mo's, replays, and all that part. uh i can reasonably be sure that when you were a player and a captain many of these were not available to you so how did you manage your team meetings your analysis your team strategy uh you know before during uh, any match without this so called technology uh uh good question uh, once again uh, i personally feel that uh, you know you have lots of technology now and you you have the video analyst uh then you have the performance analyst uh then you have the team of physios trainers and you have uh, your psychologist and all that uh exactly like what abhay was saying that the team is at your disposal uh but as a head coach you have to decide uh which faculty to bring in for that particular because if you have real long team meetings every day then the players are going to be tired okay so it's it's about breaking the the right news to the right player at the right time that's what it is so what the head coach actually does now he stores all the information which he gets throughout the day and then breaks it down and makes sure with his iq in cricket what needs to be broken to the player and what needs to be withheld okay mm. when it comes to strategizing uh, and the videos uh the old style was people picked up the captains and the coaches picked up things by naked eye uh, and strategized okay now captains and coaches are given the video feed to show that this batter is batting in a particular manner and can we strategize for that that's the yeah. difference okay yeah. i still feel that that human mind if it's applied properly can take care of all the information absorb all the information assimilate it and then come out with the right suggestions so that the the coaching part is subtle uh is accurate and it's not too long it's not okay. too long because the players have already spent their mental energy on the field for 6 6 and a half hours the last yeah. thing you want is to sit them down in a meeting which lasts another 2 hours and then what and then what happens to the early dinner part and the relaxation part they're showering you know they're getting ready they're talking to the family all that part is is disturbed so i am i am i still feel that the old style coaching was outstanding people picked it from outside without 
any video uh, analysis. They picked up things, yeah. they passed it on to the captain, captain strategized and picked up wickets. Sure. That's how it Love happened in the old times. Okay. Now yeah. it happens in a much methodical manner, much uh, much more accuracy has got into it. As you so, know, as you, uh, you see on television replays, uh, that a lot of howlers have been avoided because there's a lot of technology. But at yeah. the same time, what you watched is there are still howlers where the person sitting upstairs make mistake, make mistakes. Okay, and then yeah. you see on television that this was probably the, not the right decision. Sure. Uh, so sure. I think uh, uh, previous coaches had very sharp mind and they were trained to observe things in such a manner that they could assimilate information, pass it on to the captain, and things would happen. Now sure. it happens with the help of technology. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, but I am. Uh, but you're, you're old, old, school. old school first principles kind I'm, of. Thing. I'm I'm, lit, I'm a little bit old school. I'm not averse to using technology in cricket at all, you know. Yeah. And I have coached for last five years. Uh, 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 I've coached Maharashtra when we were actually we did not have enough budgets, and I have I've actually played the team in Ranji and T20 and uh, Vijay Hazare 50 over format without a video analyst. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is that is something which I'm proud of because I said I can still believe my I believe my instincts. I have my observation power intact, and yeah. uh, I know when to press the button when it's necessary. And sure. that is the way it was done before. So I did not feel very odd when a lot of people were not there to help me. But sure. obviously, when technology is available, uh, then you've got to use it in a very smart manner, a very smart manner. You know, Absolutely. and when technology used in a cricket match is not applied to correct the technique of a particular player. Technology yeah. used in a cricket match is only to get good results. You cannot yeah. turn around a player's technique in one match by observing something on the computer screen and saying, Are tera se hai, That's not yeah. going to happen the last time. Okay. Sure, sure. So Understood. only to get results, and you do get better results if you have lots of help. But sure, it can sure. be without help as well. So old yeah. time, new times. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sunandan, taking this technology discussion to your field, uh, I know you yeah. started, and you know, print is still big in, in journalism, but how have you adopted to this omni channel, omni technology kind of uh, uh, influence on journalism? Adwe, yeah, so, I've raised my uh, the finger, and it's yeah. not to give anybody out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to add when Sunandan was talking, but I did not. But I, you know today why Sunandan is where he is. Because I'm once again old school when, when it comes to journalism. I've always praised the like of Sundar Rajan, H. Natarajan, all these guys who yeah. were exactly like Sunandan, present on the ground right from the start of the warm-up. Yeah. And he said, and not they, to felt, ball. They, yeah. Yeah, they felt the conditions, they, they would speak to people, they would speak to crowd. And that's how Sunandan has taken this forward. And that's Absolutely. why it's important to chase something with passion as he has. Yeah. Then if it becomes your profession, it's all right. Sure. First prerequisite is passion, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So Sunandra, yeah, Sunandra, um, sorry. Advait, uh, print still remains to be my first love. Uh, print media, but at the same time, uh, one has to adapt and advance as far as technologies are concerned. You should not be saying, "Yar, mera is pe bharosa nahi hai." It shouldn't be like that. That is why on the tour of uh, New Zealand 2009, I suddenly bought uh, a camera and started shooting for no reason. Started doing tidbits for no reason, and that helped me to. Uh, uh, try my luck for television media and at the same time uh, while working for BBC and uh, Australian Broadcasting Corporation also I learned many 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 things which were quite unique again my chota sa, choti si baat bol de. Now, when I was on tour of South Africa and I visited uh, a particular place a particular railway station where uh, Mahatma Gandhiji was offloaded or was thrown yeah. out of uh, railway. So uh, I went there and did a nice uh, story uh, about that station and what had happened to Mahatma Gandhiji. 
and that story was quite well accepted in bbc but when i went to london uh, and i was attending a voice modulation course for uh, bbc uh, a gentleman over there uh, named peter he uh, he took me uh, out uh, during the lunch time and he said sunandar i want to uh, tell you something a mistake we, which you committed i said just peter just go on i want to uh, i want to understand so he said while doing that particular piece at that particular uh, railway station you were visualizing everything that uh, radio medium is uh, not for the uh, visual medium it's for as if you are working for a blind uh, guy so a blind guy should be able to visualize that thing so mm. instead of just saying that i am standing at this particular station and mahatma gandhi ji was thrown out of the railway station you should have recorded uh, uh, dak dak of a railway uh, car you should have recorded railway announcement you should have recorded that railway bell and mm. as if somebody is throwing someone from the railway you should have recorded that voice also that would have created a magic otherwise why i am telling you all this thing these small little things which i learned from the uh, the greats of this industry made me a better journalist so i love print media but at the same time visual medium is quite powerful humne abhi tak uska acha istemal kiya nahi hai and as far as radio is concerned it's a unique medium and i still love that yeah yeah uh Two, two quick questions rejoined us to what you said last time you know in your previous answer you said you watch every ball so you don't rely on technology later to see look at any replays etc et so that's one um so second thing is uh, about about you know your your your, your what you mentioned now you picked up a camera and started shooting now i i've i've seen interviews of large number of players and and videos where you actually you know use technology and you take them to your kitchen where you are there and you invite a lot of players for dinner and there is a lot of videos about this so tell us some interesting stories about that so yeah, cooking is again i, I uh, something i love and uh, that helped me on three counts three counts one is uh, i'm a freelancer mm -hmm. so money earned is also money earned and money saved is also money earned so uh, if i'm going to cook for myself i'm going to save my uh, a, a penny for me second thing it sure. keeps me healthy and third thing which uh, surendra has observed during uh, new zealand tour that everybody craves for home cooked meal yeah so, uh, sub all the players uh, from the older generation Uh, be it Sachin or Dhoni or Rahul or Lakshman or Sehwag or Yuvraj, everybody used to queue up uh, in a group and they used to have a dinner. But uh, uh, there was a rule. There was a rule. कि खाना मैं पकाऊंगा लेकिन plate आपको Dhoni पड़ेगी. And they used to honor that. They never used to mind about. That. So okay. uh, on these three counts, uh, it has really the cooking uh, uh, has really helped me. yeah yeah lovely lovely abhay uh, coming uh, sticking on to the technology part as an administrator and you mentioned this prasar bharati and media rights and of course ipl but how has technology changed the world of cricket and cricket administration what's your views on that see cricket administration has very very uh, uh, i would say uh, convenient to use the technology till now because uh, if you see their offices if you see the way in which they plan their activities if you say the way in which they control every activity they freely use the technology now even if you see if you want to just expand that uh, uh, concept of technology keeping players in bio bubble is what it is also uh, in a way a use of technology they are using technology they have got of course that much of money where they can create a bio bubble they can keep their players and they can save them from the pandemics also so cricket sure. india is very quick in adopting technologies because they are professionally managed and with the grace of god currently they have the sort of wealth which, which they can use so board yeah. uh, the indian cricket has used technology like anything uh, but at the same time the the bottom line is that technology is for your service and you are not serving the technology hmm. okay very interesting point okay okay uh 
any kind of you know because we're again i was just looking at the watch we're running out of time so one maybe last question to each one of you uh, any memorable moment uh, for you when you were president of mca uh that way every day becomes memorable but then still let me tell you uh, yeah. the match between india and new zealand which was in october 2017 uh, that was a match when uh, i started like a normal day in the early morning i received some message from bcci about some working of managers and all that so we had our liaison officers kept in the office i called them out i gave them the feedback by 9 o'clock i received a phone call from a channel saying that we have done sting operation of your curator and we have found that he is doing x y z and he needs to be you know and this is what is happening what is your reaction so i said i have not seen it so i saw it and then i immediately at about 9:30 i started for the stadium because it was a very serious issue remember one thing you sell tickets of about 3.54 crores of rupees if one ball is not bowled you have to give entire money back and yeah. uh, associations financiers were also not um, very happy so yeah. when i went there i was left with no other option but to tell the gentleman who is like my brother that i am sorry i will have to take a harsh decision today and you know suspend yeah. you and get some another curator so okay. i did it in no time because I, there was no one around so i took that decision i i, I removed him then i talked to the match referee i think it was chris broad who was there then apparently initially he said why i should get in into that etc i said you inspect the wicket and tell me if there is any problem because the other curator who comes from bcci was making it very clear that there was nothing wrong in the wicket and this is completely a, a hush up story so then okay. it was confirmed nobody knew about it and the match started at the right time i went to the press box i told them that this, uh, there is some issue i have done this 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 and then the match comments because conducting a match was so important during that sure. time and taking fast decisions Absolutely. talking to the committee of administrators talking to the government talking to the cricketing authorities changing the uh, curator taking some action against this curator and it has ruined his life but he did no wrong things because icc engaged an independent inquiry committee and it was proved that this was a cut uh, cut and paste business done by a channel uh, oh. and they still do keep doing it and two of my friends were the commentators on the channel let's not get into it yeah. and uh, so so ultimately everything became but but conducting that match was an experience for me a lifetime experience yeah, for yeah. me i can, I can imagine that yeah. lovely, lovely. thank you so much uh, surendra uh, one last question to you you've been a selector of our indian world cup winning kind of uh, you know team now my question to you is you know how does one scout talent i mean again a couple of months ago we had a similar session and uh, prakash ayer who used to be ceo of uh, mumbai indians for some time and you know mumbai indians won, won uh, the ipl during his tenure he mentioned that talent scouting is the most important for any team and he actually named uh, you know ponting and kiran mori as yeah. two people who he admires for talent scouting so as selectors yeah. and you said five selectors four years so how do you scout talent and we've heard and seen that there are these training camps and selection camps and like you said you need to travel and watch and the qualitative part of it but how do you scout talent to you know uh, okay uh, part one uh, watching net practice is only an indicator to one's talent it's okay. not the end all and be all because you've got to watch the guy under pressure when he's under pressure when he's pressed under a little pump then you make out his uh, temperament temperament plays a huge role and that is why our committee insisted on watching the matches live rather than yeah. taking a feedback from uh, say some of the press members or watching the videos we actually watch the cricket matches um, talent spotting is a very very natural talent it's a completely natural talent it, it's something which probably cannot be taught it's a very instinctive kind of thing when you have two or three players who are almost as they say in hindi 19 20 ka difference hai when you have that to differentiate between a real winner and the and the horse will win you a lot of races yeah uh, to pick that guy you need that special talent Sure. and that is something which is uh, very very tough to describe in a webinar uh, but but i feel uh, 
you have to watch the players when they're under extreme pressure. That's uh, when you know. Okay. Uh, that's when you know who has the actual temperament. Okay, yeah. and yeah. then you look into certain things. As I said, you know, a, lo a, a lot of times you are actually watching a cricket match, but you are missing things. The missing links could be if somebody is scoring 100 plus not out, you have already credited him or given him a tick on your little diary. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's running between the wicket and after he scores 100. Okay. Yeah. His attitude towards his partners after he has scored a century. His attitude towards yeah. making it into a double 100 and getting his team to a total of 500. Okay. Yeah and putting his best foot forward till the last ball of the day all those yeah. things sometimes can be ignored somebody is in a fantastic bowling spell and sometimes you sort of say Are kya ball kar rahe hai? but at the same time after those six balls he goes on the boundary and he's not very spectacular with his fielding you you sometimes you very inadvertently ignore the fact that the guy is a brilliant bowler, but maybe he's not such a good fielder to be pressed yeah. into bigger responsibilities. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. because when you press somebody into international duty, you've got to thoroughly yeah. check the product before you put him up, or put him out. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also a lot of it depends on your instinctive uh, judgment and your luck at times. Sure. Okay. Sure. But sure. at the same time, you've got to understand in international cricket, there's no place to hide. So yeah. if you if you put a guy in international cricket who is an outstanding bowler or a batsman and is found weak in running between the wicket or fielding or attitude yeah. or any of those things, mm -hmm. then he's going to be found out. He's going to be watched by millions yeah. on television. Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a very very important uh, uh, subject. Sure. Uh, it's a talent which is very inherent with some of the guys. You know, and, yeah. and actually, name, uh, for a namesake, I can give you names who I think were brilliant talent spotters. Uh, yeah. Singh Dungarpur, Hanuman Singh, uh, yeah. Vasu Paranswe, uh, yeah. Bala Saheb Bhani, Dilip Wengsarkar, Kiran More. You know, I can, I can, you know, I, I know these guys were brilliant talent yeah. spotters. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. knew that well, and, and they had this sixth sense okay so it's it's very important and there might be many many names which i, I would be missing but sure. uh, you know some of these guys had that talent but that talent is a, it's a very very instinctive and very very gifted sort of talent and and i think to be a national selector all five need not possess that talent yeah yeah there are guys so who are going to be very methodical with the talent, talent. Yeah, they're going to, they're guys who are going to be very good with numbers. There's guys who's going to be very good with observing fitness of the guys. And yeah. the chairman and some of the senior members must have that eye whether the guy they are picking is the right guy or not. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's that's all about it. I think it's it's tough yeah. to describe it. Love but uh, thank you, thank you. I think talent is a very natural gift. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely. So Nandan, one fun final question for the today is to you. Uh, slightly uh, different uh, this thing. I thought you know that since you mentioned that you know when you describe your day that you interact with people, selectors, coaches, players, ex-players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now you know to observe these people obviously, and you know I know for a fact that you have great relationship with uh, you know all the cricketers over the last 30 years, including current uh, you know Indian team players. Now, when you have this personal relationship, professional relationship, and at the end of the day, like you said, after tea, you start tracking down, you know, uh, you know uh, remains of the day, as you say. Uh, how do you ensure that, you know, your relationship with these players doesn't come in the way of your objectivity when you are sort of scrutinizing them, commenting on them, uh, you know, commending them, criticizing them? And the other way, that how does it not come in the way of your relationship if that happens so? And has there been any, you can name, not name your choice, but has there been any instances where thanks to you being very, very critical of them from a strictly professional perspective, unfortunately, it, uh, it, it, it affected your personal kind of uh, equity with them? Achut, Advait, I have never spoiled my relation with players, even though I have criticized them. Because okay. my heart was clear, my intentions were pure, 
and never yeah. ever i put on a frivolous kind of a argument or an allegation against them that was the main thing and having played cricket at least to some level i could understand what is the pressure is all about how it is difficult to stand at a short leg and try to catch a catch how is it difficult to play a last half an hour uh, of a day when you are fielded for say 500 runs so yeah. all these nitty gritties have helped me as a journalist and mm. to be to be honest uh, with you player never will never ever uh, argue with you if you criticize them on a cricketing background mm. if you are going to say his attitude wasn't right and everything that that is not on you have to be ob objective and not subjective in your criticism yeah uh, again uh, uh, many a times it has so happened that i have criticized a player they they asked me did you write the, uh, the this kind of a copy i said yes i did so no problem let's be clear let's be open about our relationship let's chat yeah. whether we will agree we we always sign a a, a contract saying that uh, you should be able to uh, agree to disagree and that mm. is the most important thing and yeah, that is yeah. why my relationship has always been nice with the players sure sure great just I know one, we could just go one, on for one thing yeah, Adwain, yeah. when it comes to selection panel it's it's the same principle which applies that you have to agree to disagree and even if you disagree you actually after lots of disagreements you come out with a consensus which gives you the right team and everybody's convinced that what we are doing it's on the right lines and it has like sure. sanandan said good intentions for all players sure, sure, sure. that's yeah. what it is all about great great lovely i mean good intentions uh, you know are the are the baseline for uh, you know all the things that you can do and should do uh, I, I i know we can continue this for much much longer time but we have to be aware and mindful of the time limit that we so have that's so that's one thing. only one yeah. thing uh, yeah. one minute i will complete it first is to thank you for giving us an opportunity of expressing no, 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 my pleasure, my pleasure. After a very long time and then i congratulate milin also for writing such a wonderful book and wish him all the best uh, yeah. in future and yes, uh, i hope that it becomes a best seller sure yeah. sure so thank you thanks abhay thanks surendra thanks sunandan for this lovely dialogue that we had we i, I hope we had more time but uh, that's that's life and uh, at the end of the day it's uh, you know 80 hours and 90 hours have been bored you know the next day as we say and uh, uh, thank you again all of you thanks milin for uh, you know starting the program on a very high note sharing your own journey as well and uh, uh, thanks for the wonderful audience to uh, stick around for slightly more time than we had anticipated over to you darpan thank you advait thank you on behalf of national hrd um, we would like to thank um advait sir and his team for putting up uh, such a beautiful beautiful panel where uh, we've got to learn trust me a lot many more things than those 22 yards and um as a big fan and cricket enthusiast most of our audiences are looking forward for you know sessions beyond the 22 yards and beyond session uh one of them uh, in the audience has also written if we can have more of such great stars to motivate the you know some hidden talent inside the hr fraternity people as well absolutely and those who might have forgotten that they were actually at a time very good uh you know promising prospects uh i'll not take much of time now thank you so much esteemed panelists i am honored to uh, be even on the screen with you all uh thank you so much and look forward for such great sessions again Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much All the best, Milan, for being with us. Good luck for your book, Milan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good, you. Luck, Good luck, Milan. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, bye everyone. Thank, Thank you so much for being with Nash Chilechadi. Thank you.